What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. So in today's video, I want to take a moment to talk about extracting MIDI groove templates from MIDI files. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been spending a lot of time trying to improve my drum programming and drum sequencing skills. One of the things that obviously comes into play there is working with different groove templates in addition to really kind of getting into the finer details of adjusting velocities, swing values, ghost notes, things like that. Now, a good friend of mine happened to share with me a bunch of different folders containing a bunch of MIDI drum grooves. I wanted to have a palette of drum grooves to work with. So essentially, I've converted all of those drum grooves from the MIDI files into Studio One quantize files. So in order to talk about this a little bit further though, let's take a quick listen to this file. So this is 16th notes at a fixed velocity at 120 BPM. So if we double click our instrument part, this opens up the editor, we click the quantize menu. If we head to this section, this section may be blank for you or it may have one folder or a couple of them in there, but essentially what this allows you to do is I could say, all right, I wanna go to the MPC 60 and let's go to the 16th note and let's go to swing 57. So that loads this MIDI groove template into my actual song now. So now that this is loaded, I can select all of these files and then I can apply this quantization to this note data. Now watch what happens when I click apply. Undo. Now another thing worth pointing out is that I'm only using the start point. But some MIDI grooves, they also have velocity information. So not just timing values, but also velocity. Now, in this particular case, I can tell you that these are all 127, but it's the timing that I'm looking to extract from this file. But just for kind of for sake of demonstration, if we move the velocity up, watch what happens now when I quantize these hard 16ths according to this clip or this groove template. Keep in mind, these are all at 127, and these are probably somewhere around 65. So notice that when I had the velocity slider up to 100% that it quantized the timing and also the velocity. And obviously this would differ depending on the percentage that I apply. So that's kind of splitting the difference between those there. So with all that said and done, let's take a look at how you would actually take some MIDI files and convert them into a groove template that you can use for future productions. First things first, you need to have some MIDI grooves. These were given to me by a good friend of mine. And like I said, I think the majority of these came from Ableton. But one thing worth pointing out is that these are actual MIDI files. So these aren't a proprietary groove template format that exists in Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase or Ableton. These are the actual MIDI files. But what these MIDI files do have is the unique timing that's unique to these particular drum machines that they're modeling, or rather that they're recorded performances of. So what we need to do, we need to drag these MIDI files into Studio One. Now the first thing to note is that anytime you drag and drop a MIDI event into the Groove Clipboard, you'll notice that it automatically takes on this name. So my first step in terms of dragging my MIDI files is I want to go ahead and make sure that... I don't have anything that doesn't need to be there. So for example, I'm gonna take channel one out of the name. Even though channel one isn't in these MIDI files in the finder, you'll sometimes find that you drag something into Studio One and it will end up saying that. Now, another tip here is that we can double click the track name and shift return or shift enter will name all the events on this track according to the track name. So this is a quick way for me to straighten out the naming. Now it's just a matter of dragging and dropping in here. You can see that the name updates. You click this little plus tab to store a preset. Now the preset is automatically taking on the name of the instrument part. Now I've already done these, so it's putting a brackets one. Let's just go ahead and run with that. As I drag and drop here, see how the lines, you can see that slight visual change again. We're going to store preset. We'll select the next one, click hold, drag and drop. This is updated. It updated the file name. Again, store preset. And now click the last one, drag it and drop it, store preset. We will click OK. So now if you go to your presets, and we have this drop down menu. Now you'll notice that these four files 
are now sitting in the presets. And what this means is that this is global. So I can use these on future productions. It's not just for this song. Now, if you want to make any changes to the naming or the way that these are structured in terms of subfolders, we can right click and we have the option to show in Finder. Now, if you're on a PC, this would say show in Explorer, I believe. Now from here, I can structure these any way I want. So I could add a new folder, for example. And for the sake of demonstration, just so these show up at the very top, let's just call this folder ABC. So now it'll be first in the list. Now, if you're still in the same song and you wanted to use these right away, when we click here, you'll notice that they're still at the bottom. So if you were to close Studio One, reopen it, it would rescan all the presets and those would show up in the proper subfolder. But there's a way that we can do this manually. If we click this Home tab, we can re-index these presets. And now once it's done scanning all of these presets, you'll see that we can click the same menu and now we have these same files available to use in the subfolder that we created. Now, let's go to Show and Finder. If somebody is sharing any of these presets with you manually, so these quantized settings that they've created or the dot quantized file format, these can be found in Studio One, which is in your documents, presets, user presets, quantized settings. And then like I said, the default behavior is they will all store to the top level folder, which is here. But if you need them to have subfolders, you can just go ahead and do that manually and then re-index your presets and then everything will follow. So that's how you take a MIDI file and extract a groove template from that file and save it so that it can be recalled later and applied towards your future productions. Now, in another video, I'm going to take a look at how you can do the same thing with audio files and how those groove templates can be used to quantize either audio files or MIDI files when working in Studio One. So anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.